start recording. So today, welcome everybody. Um, so as I said, you know, a couple of uh, you did not have a chance to introduce. Say a few words. You know, when you come here, get excited, talk to us. You know, listen to uh, others, and introduce yourself, and listen to me, and so on, and interact also. That's the joy of being here. So uh, in that sense, you know, uh, we didn't have a chance to hear from um, Tidal Markets, Tom Hazelton, uh, Raghu, uh, Raghu, I'm not sure, I think you introduced yourself, I think Baibak, uh, Regmi, um, you know, a few other Nini and so on. So uh, next week, hopefully, you know, you'll have a chance to talk to us, say a few words about it. Uh, for some of us missed, who missed the first session, uh, will you be kind enough to share the recording? I think definitely, no, I want to keep these things posted for all of you. I, the recording is available. I will make it available today. Um, you know, going forward, every week I will make it available uh, immediately within a day or two. Okay. And I will provide a link also. So the best way to get the link is I will post it in the meetup uh, as well as in the, uh, in the, uh linkedin where i po mostly post these things okay some of you i'm pretty sure came through the linkedin um so i will do that thank you very much for reminding me about that uh today is about i, I introduced last time uh basically i introduced you know um, a few lines i'll just quickly recall that the books that we use uh i added that uh, slide here i have this you know in the meetup sessions and so on but Explicitly, I made it clear this time. Okay, uh, the book. So our three books, you know, essentially I'll be following: R for Data Science, Hadley Wickham, Garrett uh, Grohlman. Uh, Grohlman, you know, excellent book. Introductory Statistics with R, excellent book. And then the R Cook book. You know, it's uh, just a, basically a collection of all the important things that people usually do. Okay, so these are the books that we will use. Quickly, you know, where are we? Because, you know, I just wanted to tell you that there's a huge amount of data that's getting accumulated. And the more importantly, there are two different types of data, the structured data, unstructured data. And, uh, you know, unstructured data is all about machine generated, mostly machine generated, equipment generated data. And the human generated data are structured data, uh, very beautifully arranged rows and columns. And, uh, you know, it's like an Excel sheet, okay? Um, and this is most commonly, we have been using it for many, 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 many years, but then now things have changed, you know, we have to work with, you know, these kinds of data also, machine learning, generated hybrid data, or equipment related like camera, you know, video camera, or audio, you know, equipment and so on, right? So including laptop recordings and so on. So, um, and I differentiate this broadly speaking as designed data versus undesigned data. So the big data is all about undesigned data and the design data is all about statisticians traditional world. Okay, statisticians traditional world is what the design data is all about. And I have a very nice summary here and I take a very specific position. You may look, you may think that I'm taking probably a strong position. I definitely don't think so, but I'm very happy to hear you out hear you out in terms of what you think why you think the way you say what you say you know what i say is very clear here okay once again i have to mute out everybody i guess uh please uh, mute out okay thanks a lot um so um it is important uh to see this uh these differences because uh from the beginning get go Statisticians, you know, have a world has been defined by small data and best large data and still structured data. Statisticians haven't done the work yet. That doesn't mean that they won't work or they are incapable or their science is incapable because there's a tendency to hear in the marketplace, you know, uh, oh, statisticians are, you know, um, it's all very limited type of, you know, analysis, this and that. It's all wrong. Take it from me, it's a wrong approach. And that's where when people like Gwenji come here, I really appreciate because, you know, you can see there are you know, moments of brightness, you see, uh, somewhere in the world that, you know, people realize that, you know, they need to learn the foundations of statistics. It's coming now that 12 weeks we are going to do, so don't worry about it. I'm still talking about all these things. 
because we just need this kind of experiences this kind of you know important uh, uh, important you know uh, insights uh, tidal market is saying that you know uh, is small again uh, i'm not sure oh, one second so i hope i hope you are saying you want leave no not give me one moment please i think i know most of the time like always almost all the okay is that okay now is it better can you please put... it is better yeah thank you sir all right, all right. so you know i thought that's a full screen but somehow it has become small screen for some reason okay um it is supposed to be full screen okay all right so do understand this particular slide you know that i will also post i i don't remember i posted this or not i'll also post the slides okay um so do please do uh, read this one this is a very opinion type statement but it is not it is the evolution of what is going on in the world in terms of statistics versus big data okay uh, i think there is a lot both sides can learn um, and i i feel uh, you know it's important that statistician know and here is a challenge i i throw right who can really sculpt one cell is it the statistical science or the ai the ai broadly is all about big data and that is the reason why um, I I feel everybody need to learn the foundation, the essence of statistics. Okay, the beauty of this particular collection of presentation is that it's all about really uh, why we do what we do, and also I will show you how we do. But oftentimes we miss why we do what we do. Okay, we are always okay. Here's the mean. I given a data set, mean, median, mode, and then you know the, draw, draw a graph. Uh, you know, sometimes you know, get some good insights, that's another story. Given a data, given a data, given a data. But real life problems don't come like given a data. It comes as given a problem. There's a big difference. Okay. So we all need to learn from those perspectives. Okay. And that's how I can present this. And that's how I believe this is a, a very valuable free course. You cannot get anywhere else. Okay. Uh, because you need experience, you need consulting experience, you have you need practice experience, and you need the mathematical and statistical experience also. The way I teach, okay, uh, the way we teach in Instra Valdics, and also this is one of we teach one of the courses called Statistical Methods and Business Business Opportunities and Statistical Methods, okay, where we have very hands-on, okay, uh, make sure that you know you get 15 hours of instructions and 15 hours of lab time. And every lab hour is equal to one and a half, uh, I'm sorry, two times the instruction value in terms of you know, the mathematics of it. So you get a tremendous amount of training in our institute. But this is more to get you excited about more and more continuously thinking about data, data science, statistical science, statistical learning, machine learning. Okay. So, um, so here is again fundamental. What are the fundamental questions of data analysis? Okay. Uh, I think I just need to say this one little more detail. I'm going to do that, but our, my purpose is today to cover data structures. I have two sessions on data structures and data transformations. So this is one of the first. So don't worry about it. We'll cover that in two two weeks. Okay. Um, so, but we will start the data structures. You know, I'll go through you know quite a bit of material today. Uh, the fundamental questions of data analysis because these things matter in the R structures also. Whatever I'm talking will matter how they relate to R, or even Python, okay? But even though we take R, uh, in fact, one day, I hope to hear from you, all of you, uh, what would have been more exciting? Is it the uh, statistics with R or statistics with Python? Can you go ahead, please, and respond to me in the chat area? Just give me the answer in the chat area. You just say R or Python, or whatever your choice. Yeah, one of those three things you can take, okay? You know, what is more exciting? Statistics with R or statistics with Python? I got one answer. Pradeep says Python. Statistics with Python. That's what it means. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Everybody should participate. Give me your input. You have to think some little bit and give an answer. I got two. Two Python so far. Okay. I mean, we may do that in the future. Uh, one I one uh, or uh, that's fine. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going, please. Faster is better. Everybody should participate. Everybody should give an answer. Okay. You know, don't don't feel uh, shy or anything. It's your time and my time too. 
I got only three answers, four answers. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, go ahead. quick, 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 quick. Everybody give an answer. What do you think is the most exciting? Statistics with R strat or statistics with Python? I got five, you know, R is dominating now. Okay, five out of, three out of five is now R. Four of six is R. Good. Maybe because you came with an R expectation. I don't know because the title is like that, right? Possible. But you can always say what you think, you know, independent of what, I, what we are giving. So I got four out of that majority is R. Go ahead, please. I would like to hear from you, you know. Let's make it interesting, our sessions, okay, interacting with each other. Go ahead. While that is happening, I want to tell you these are the fundamental questions. What are they? We want to know where most of the data are located. Key the word, keyword, location. How they are spread out. How they are heat. These are fundamental questions. One of the fundamental questions. Observations being limited, it represents what full form of the population is. And in terms of full form of the population, these are the most fundamental thing. Where they are located, I'm sorry, where they are located, how they are spread out, how they are heaped. These are mean, median, mode, skewness, cutters, estimations. Okay. Do we have right data for the right purpose on hand? This is about, about measurement. Okay. We, do we have the right data for the right question, right purpose on hand? And do we have enough data? That is about sampling. Okay. Are these observations that we should, no, are there observations that we should ignore? There are observations that don't belong there for coding problems, you know, translation problem or sampling problem and so on. Okay. And we, sh we should think about those things. Are we converting right questions into right measurement that matters? So this is about really right question. I introduced, you know, right measurement already. Okay. Right question, right question for the right data, right measurement. Okay. So what's meant by predicting the right measurement? Various functional forms for prediction that are explainable. Okay. Uh, explainable predictive functions. Are these analysis generalizable to the population? Very, very, very important. It's not just you get data analyze it. You are always thinking about that this is a good representation of the population. So you are going to extrapolate it to the population. You are taking sample from the population, so you have to relate it to the population in good, you know, uh, genuine, uh, truthful ma manner, right? Uh, and uh, finally, how do we make sure the results are consistent, accurate, and relevant? Consistent, accurate, and relevant. So every time you take sample, you should get the same result. And whatever you are doing, it should be accurate. And whatever you are doing should also be relevant to the questions that raised your analysis. And this, I call it the famous cryptic statement, communication is like driving a car. And you use visualization to help us also. So these are the basically fundamental questions of data analysis. Okay. And uh, I mentioned, you know, visualization, why visualization is important using that, this data, you know, and only when you plot the data in the visual form, you will see the problem here and why you prefer one over the other. Yeah, one particular data set over the other or what you adjustments you have to make. Okay, so we talked about that last time. So, uh, and finally I came to the tools we use is R, why R? You know, it's free open source, large community of users, latest cutting technology is their independent platform, gateway to lucrative career. You know, it is true. I don't know how many of you know. You know, Python is great and famous, but R also has enormous lot of opportunities for you to solve problems in the way statisticians have developed the science in the last 150 years. And it has a robust visualization library. I love it in that sense. And it's a go-to language for staff and data science used in almost every industry. Okay. And uh, so I want to tell you that you now go to this link. Um, uh, somebody posted that link, right? For R. Somebody asked for an R and somebody posted it. So I think I want to check it out. I think it is correct. That is correct. If you are using Windows, this is the one. Are you able to see in the, I will post it here. If you are using the Windows, this is the right one. So, oh. 
here it is are you able to see this everyone okay so if i click on this one i should come here oh all right it's it's deeper than that okay so 4.1 r 4.1 for windows is the latest one please use that one okay yeah it's generally generally backward compatible that's not a problem unless there are some fundamental changes happen uh you know then you know you have to use uh the latest version of r for better um, usage also packages might not be updated with the latest functionality so there might be some problem but there is nothing you can do about it if you love a particular package you know you trust that it is maintained by a right group I mean, maintained by a group that cares for the uh, for the updates based on the latest versions of R. So those are all challenges might happen, but predominantly, uh, unless you are you know actual data science practitioner, that's not a problem. But basic R, everything should work in general. So use this one. That link I have given you in this uh, in the, posted by Mr. Ravi, I think. Okay, Raghu or Ravi? No, you can check it out. Okay. Uh, Raghu, yeah, Mr. Raghu has posted that. That's the place. Just get in there and download it. Use it. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Today is uh, data structures day. Okay. So we talked about the status of statistical science. Why you need to do what you need to do. And now today we are ready to load the R and you, you know learn some basic data structures. Okay. Um, when we say data structure, uh, I, I think it was really confused in the beginning, right? What is this data structures and so on but it is the optimization effort that you know by the software to utilize the system and your science you know every science has data to be stored retrieved and used in a particular way every science has data to be stored used and uh, connected to connecting it to your science in an efficient way the efficiency of the data storage and usage is what is driving the data structures. But in a mathematical statistical sense, these are basically the following the key uh, key terminologies that matters. What is a simple single valued variables? That is called scalar. What is a vector? A sequence of numerals or sequence of strings. Okay, same type. No, homogeneous okay. items inside are identifiable by by its location index in the list not appendable or modifiable so in python this is called a list basically okay if it is no it's called tuple if it is uh, and tuple can be mixed also if it is uh, um, uh, appendable modifiable then it's called list in python but here they have a different slightly different terminologies because you know it's the historical way of how statisticians think okay how statisticians think about the collection of data elements to come together in in order to do statistical analysis okay so they talked about scalar they talked about vector and matrices are matrices are numerals or strings again you know you have to uh, by definition we will talk we will see some of the examples of one quickly matrices are of uh, homogeneous type okay and uh, uh, it's not dependable uh, appendable or modified there is also list you know in r which is different compared to the r and it's more generic you know it kind of uses all kinds of good properties within its uh, within its uh, you know construction construction okay lists of sequence are mixed items arrays are multi-dimensional vectors of homogeneous type and sets are a collection of items without index. You all know this, this is coming from mathematics. Okay. And strings are arrangement, arrangement of sequence of characters as a single variable. A dictionary is a name key value pair. No, I don't want to say key value pair dictionary. You know, a yeah, key is there and what is its value? It's like a dictionary. It's a word here. What is its meaning? Right? Like that. It's okay. That's why it's called a dictionary. Key value paired structure. The beautiful thing about a dictionary is that. You know you don't need to know the location where it is you know in the in the collection of items you don't need to know the location as long as you know the key you know you can record the value for that particular um you know the for that particular collection of data values okay so dictionary is without index of list in python it is the same thing without index uh, without you know the lists are with index collection of items with index you can 
call the items specific item by calling the index dictionaries are without index similar to list without index but call them by the key keys by the keys you call the keys and its value that's you know you don't, you don't need to know the location right on the other hand the vectors are sequence of numerals or the it could be strings um, and it could be mixed also matrices are homogeneous num numerals or strings lists are sequence of mixed items again uh, arrays are multi-dimensional vectors of homogeneous data type it could be three-dimensional matrices to say okay matrix 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 that's a three-dimensional matrix matrix is rows and columns you know you all know just to you know i'm just recalling this definition so these are the fundamental data structures we have to know how it is represented recalled and used in r okay so here is the you know structure geometrically you know vector is like this matrix has vector is just a sequence right Ma matrix has you know rows and columns and arrays have multiple matrices and multi-dimensional arrays it could be four dimensional arrays and you might wonder does it have really practical value think about it of course yes why for example here is an example right if i have stores you know walmart store for example they have stores in countries different countries they have stores within the countries in the states within the states they have the um, let's say district within the district they have the uh, town sometimes certain towns have multiple stores also but then now you go how many dimensions are there under the path i passed under the country states district town okay now multiple stores could be there in town if you take uh, if you take let's say dallas uh, there are lots of uh, walmart stores right so it could be multiple stores within the town also so that's a fifth dimension sixth dimension is the list of all sku okay uh, skew number which refers each skew number refers to a particular product right that is sixth dimension and each skews the price and that is the continuous variable so we are talking about only the dimensions right now so say you know sku is uh, uh, the sixth dimension there are this is the sixth dimension six dimension uh, array so to say and it can be huge right you know they have millions of skews so it has a practical meaning in fact the tensor algebra you will see tensor applications and google nicely used that tensor flow from that tensor is basically a multi-dimensional array okay so these are all connected and they all have some mathematical properties statistical properties and are related system specific application or you know, interface oriented data structure relationships that's why data structures matter because certain data you have you want to store it in a certain way and recall it in a way a certain way and operate on it that's why data structures matter okay there are you can define your own data structures depending upon your own applications if you take gis it has a different data structure we are not going in there gis geographic information system and if you look at you know genetics it has a different data structure so the application package may define a data structure with certain properties and that's what we are talking about it when we say data structure but here we are talking about the basic mathematical statistical um, based data structures that are immediately usable but if you have any special application you may develop your own data structures okay that's why data structures matter of course scalars means you know single valued variable if you have single valued variable you know addition subtraction division multiplication and hence if i have a value like x equal to 5 and y is equal to 3.5 you can define all these things okay so we know this thing up to this we know everybody knows you know basic arithmetics but also two more important arithmetics are exponential and the inverse of exponential exponential is e power x for example e is natural you know it's a specific value but it could be a power x so it's an exponential function okay that is this is how we do it if it is x power y we do it in r x the arrow or y that's what we do to get the power value but the opposite of that the inverse of that is what is called the log function value so power function addition function subtraction multiplication division power function inverse of power function that is called the log function okay so if you have e power x you know then 
you know, uh, the logarithm of the inverse of the e power x, you know, is logarithm of x. No base means no, no natural logarithm, but the function that we use in R is like this. So recall this one. Six operations is what I was talking about, basically, right? This is the natural, uh, this is called e power x, exponential of x, e power x. This is the general power function. This is, you know, specific power function. And for this specific fun power function, the inverse is log, log x, okay? So these are single value based mathematics that we all need to know and we, we will use that. And I said vector values, vectors are multi-valued variables. This is, scalars are single valued variables. This is, vectors are multi-valued variables. The function is called coercion function. Very, very, very interesting and important. Coercion function, starting letter with the letter C, and that's why we use the function called C in R, okay? Sometimes people say it is a combined function, it is not. Sometimes they say concatenation function, you know, it is really not. Coercion is the right word because you will see it, co it is going to coerce all the elements inside that, inside that into its base mode. And I will talk to you about what is meant by base mode. So, for example, x is equal to or you know, assign the vector of these items, elements, uh, vector means here coerce. 5, 3.5. Coerce the, the, this collection of items 5, 3.5 and y is you know coerce the collection of item 2,7 and then now you have the uh, you can do now you know whatever the mathematics you want to do. Addition subtraction is very very clear right. Addition subtraction is very clear. It is going to take the corresponding element that's how it is structured okay remember that. If they are same type of you know um, same type of uh, uh, base value. This is uh, actually what is called the float. Okay, because the base value is even though it is in integer, because this is 3.5, it will coerce into float. That means decimals. And in general, it will even if it is integer, it will take back the everything to the lower level, you know, the more basic level. For the numbers, it is more basic level is the uh, float value or decimal value function. So, given that it will do addition with the corresponding values, subtraction with the corresponding values, but now I want to want you to think about this. What would this be? It should make some sense, isn't it? And R has built in automatically. You, what do you mean otherwise? You know, we don't know. If, you know, what is meant by dividing this vector by this vector, right? What is meant by dividing? What is meant by multiplication? And what is meant by exponential? What is meant by log? Right? These are the functions I told you, right? So, shall we just go and check it out what, it, what happens? Let's do that. Okay. So, what I'm saying here is, I have to go back. I wish I had my camera working on the other screen. That would have been, I don't have to move around things here. So, let us talk about, I said, you know, I'm going to clear all these things. Okay. So, I said, uh, X is equal to C. Uh, x is equal to okay. x, x equal to uh, coerce, you know, uh, 3, comma, 4, some number, right? And you can use semicolon in R uh, to add more multiple commands, okay? Multiple commands, except the print. You know, if you use print, then, you know, it won't work with you. The last statement will only work for you. But uh, otherwise, you can use multiple commands in one line. So I'm doing that here. So let's say minus 3.5. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> I should see it. it. says P, right? Okay. Now, x plus x, y is a vector. Remember that it's more tricky, right? So it has to use the corresponding term. That's the tricky part. So x plus y means add this, you know, t plus minus t, the corresponding element, so it's zero. And four point four plus point five, four point five. Now let's do the same thing. Uh, I should be able to recall. Okay, so let's do that. So you expect that the corresponding terms are happening there, right? So that's why it is six on three point, uh, plus three point five. Let's do this one. What does this mean? What do you expect? It's, I think you should be able you should be able to ex expect this very uh, easy, right? That is multiply the corresponding terms, and so is the division. So even vector, 
vector calculation, corresponding terms are being used. That's the point. It's easy, it's quick. You know, if you are looking that kind of expression, that kind of translation, that kind of transformation, that kind of computation, it works super well. Very interesting. Let's do this one. The power function, right? Exponential of, let's say, x. Whoa. So what it means is exponential of each of the term in the same way. We are not surprised here, right? Because that is the structure of R. Okay. Uh, you can share what's your experience with similar thing in Python if you want. You can put it there in this in the uh, chat area, right? So uh, go to uh, let's do the exponential of four, right? And that is what you see. So it is taking the corresponding elements, okay? Now, uh, let me go back to this one. So, you know, if you define in terms of uh, uh, coerce function, it is going to go back to the base. What does that base mean here? Let me go back and check it out. What is the type of type of uh, axis? It's a double. It's also called, you know, float uh, decimals, but the, that the decimal is a more, you know, mathematician type of, uh, terminology. But you call it as double, that's what decimals are all about, okay? Uh, double precision. Um, so type of is something that you should always use if you ever want to check it out what it is. So if I do, uh, I can coerce you know, um, uh, different strings also, right? I, I, I told you I'll come to that, but let me talk to you more about the computations you know, before I go there. You can identify members of a vector by its position. The position starts with 1 in R, but in Python it starts with 0. Remember the key difference. Here and there I might say key differences. Okay? Um, so the position always index starts with 1 in R, but in Python it's 0. So here is an example, you know, so let's do the x1 you know, and the exponential of 1. So let's do the x1 and you, call, you remember that even though it is coerced into a vector, I'm using double uh, square parentheses to call its membership, to call its membership, okay? Double parentheses. In fact, in the, this part resembles like the Python list, okay? Uh, resembles like the Python list. Now, I want to say exponential of, I can do like this, uh, x to, wait, I'm sorry. Not built in, one moment. Exponential of, So you have to uh, let's see, go back to here. So we know error. Object of type built in is not subsetable. So I should have put this parenthesis, not that one. That is the thing. So it's a function, it's not an object, subsetable object. Exponential is not a subsetable object, it's a function. Okay. So that's how it works. So I can whatever I said earlier, know that I can call them because that's where it becomes like a list in Python, right? I can index, by index I can call. The index is the, the position of the element. In this case, the second position in the axis, the, the second position in the axis is what? That is four, right? That's a four. That four is used here in the exponential function. That's what this means. Now it's also called here. So, um, so position recalling is important. And uh, sometimes it is also, you know, it behaves, I don't want to say behaves, it, it's also, uh, it also works as a list, okay? Um, so the coercion collection is, you know, using the container symbol. This container symbol is a very important concept, you know. For example, the coercion function container symbol is the, the uh, left and right parentheses. Because R is a functional language, Python, is not just the functional language, it is also other things and things. It has also other things, okay? So because R is a functional language, everything is a function, so you have to use most of the time, you have to use, in fact, I think always you have to use this container symbol. Okay? So let's do and see how it is working. But in the case of Python, different data structures, whatever I talked to you about, list as a, list as a different container, that is the square bracket, tuples as a you know, container, container like this. Tuples means, you know, just a collection of uh, unmodifiable list, basically. 
just an un unmodifiable list is called a tuple. Um, and uh, sets are a square, you know, double brackets. Um, three, four things are important. Ah, the dictionary also has a double bracket. Okay, dictionary also has a double bracket. So Python, the representation Python is a lot more very distinct and very clear. Uh, R, you know, is thinking from the point of view of statistical computation, mathematical computations. So it doesn't distinguish all these things so delineating all these differences very clearly, but it works for statistics and mathematics because that's the way the statistician mathematicians think about it. So um, the, and, and also on top of it, R being a functional uh, programming language, the container concept, function is also defined within left parenthesis like this, right parenthesis like this. So it works well systematically within R. So we'll we'll see all these things in a little more. Okay. Now I said I can also define the coercion in terms of you know, you know mix of characters and uh, and the integers also. You can do that. Okay. Uh, so what I'm saying is you, know, you can coerce lists of different types. Again, that's where the, the word coerce comes is important, not combined, and it's also the it's the function is called the C function. Okay, and it is coercing all the time. So let's do this one. Uh, so here, here we are, um, the list is, again, I'm, I'm using the word, remember that, you know, it's a coercion term, but I also use the word list, okay? Even though it is a container, it's a specific container, left parenthesis, right, regular left parenthesis, right parenthesis. Um, so I can use this and then I can continue to modify with this additional, but I'm, whenever I modify, you know, I'm saying a new, new, you know, new vector name, right? And because of this, it will force everything to string actually. Because of this, because that is here, which is a string, all the elements, so the all the elements of you know that is containing x2 will be coerced to string. Okay, you can see that. Also, sometimes this is called atomic vectors, you know, this type of vectors are called atomic vectors. So whatever you do, vector, 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 list, 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 they will become again finally a flat atomic vector. Okay, so let's quickly do, uh, how about this, you know, we do this one, show it to you that is how it's working, and then I will quickly move to matrices and uh, arrays, okay, just to hang in there, all right, this one, oh joy, all right, so, you know what, I want to simplify this, make it smaller, that's why you know my bigger screen should work, but it didn't work today. All right, uh, that would that would make it easier for me. Uh, we know x two. Let's just define x two because this is better. Unnecessary that one. So if I do, if I get call x two, you see this one. All the elements. First of all, it brought this into this. This particular list became elements, number elements there, and then it is adding with SAM because SAM is this way. I'm saying that now it will go to the most basic. Uh, it will coerce, not make make it most basic, but coerce all the element to the most basic of the elements that are contained here. The most basic element here is becomes a string because of this string. So now X2 has become just a collection of strings. So it coerces all the elements to the most basic. When you have integers, it will coerce to double. When you have a character there, any one character, it will coerce everything into character. Okay. So that's another thing. Um, uh, oh, there are also functions. There are also functions that will help you test the various properties of atomic vectors. Atomic vectors are the flat ones. And whatever I said, the coercing function that gives, gives you, right? So there is something called type of, I already told you. And then sometimes you want to check whether, you know, is it an integer alone or is it atomic? Is it, uh, uh, because I remember whatever the variable name, you only know the variable name. You may not know, one moment. Okay, I'll make it bigger. Uh, you only know the variable name and you don't know what it is or because you have a long collection of uh, codes, then you want to check it out. These are called you know, testing functions, okay? What is the type of the function? What is the type of the variable? Okay. What is the type of the, the and then is it the variable purely integers? You can define only integers also. Okay. 
If they turn out to be integers, otherwise it will coerce to flow, double, okay? float or double. Um, and, uh, you know, is it atomic vector or array or you know, matrices or something? Oh, by the way, that is also logical. Okay, so that is also logical. So is it numeric? And uh, and is it, uh, and, and then it is also list, you know, you want to test whether something is in this format. So all these things are, po you know, possible functions for you to check some basic properties of the atomic vectors. So is it, uh, first of all, type of will tell you what type of uh, atomic vector it is, uh, float or string or uh, list. Um, is it integer? Is it atomic? Type of, uh, uh, is it double? Is it numeric? Um, and then finally, there's also what is called the structure. Okay, so what is the structure of this? So it is the, it gives you the full properties of the, uh, the atomic vector you may have. So for example, I'm just saying, what is the structure of this, okay? So I already defined inside this one. So there's one that's A there. So it says, because there's a, a string is there A, so it says it's a character vector, okay? And what are the elements? A is one of the elements, one is one of the elements. So one is stored as a character. So that's what I meant as a, the whole thing is, you know, coerced to string. Let's quickly go to another important word called list, explicitly called list. This is very interesting. This is most powerful in R. Okay? It is basically the collection of collection of all the things that whatever you put inside. This is where the object-oriented programming is, you know, will end up using list as most fundamental data property in data structure in R. In R, okay? which is not the case in uh, uh, in Python. <clears throat> list the word list has, you know, it has. Uh, all the fundamental properties of data structure that you can use because a list can contain a list and a list can also ha can have a member as matrix, vector as a matrix, scalar or uh, uh, arrays, uh, logical, it can contain anything and everything, okay, a list in, um, in, uh, in R, okay, and it's most fundamental here. So, for example, this is a sequence function, you know, with always when, when you have double column, this means you know, under the construct specific, it will say, one column means one, two, three. That's why it is. So first element of this is one, two, three. So it's a list of lists. You can see that the second elements, second element. That is the beauty of list. You know, otherwise it would become a flat. Right, right now, if you put it as C, it will be a flat, uh, flat vector uh, of elements. That will come come down to uh, basically to string. Okay, because string is the the, the most common denominator here. Okay, the, the common denominator here. So, um, what, so the second part, second element in the list is a single vector, single element vector. Third element is a truth function, basically truth values, true, false, true. You know, so that is the third element in the list. Fourth element is the basically these two elements, which is again a vector, flat vector. So you can see the complex combination of items are brought under the term called list. Coerce is different and list is different. Remember that. Okay. Another thing, quickly. Um, so the specialty of list compared to atomic vector is that we can create a list of lists and that's what I mentioned last time because a list can contain other lists this makes them fundamentally different from atomic vector and also the most powerful structure of course every powerful structure will also be more complicated also the way how it is stored and how it is reformed and so on it is going to cost time and you know resources but we need those things that's where you know, we come here with this idea of list in, uh, you know, as defined in R and this can, this can contain less and that is the uh, interesting, most interesting thing. So here is a, one quick example I want to share with you. Um, oh, there is also a function called, you know, a test function called is list. Okay. So empty cars is a data set. A yeah, data set is a, a, you know, data frame also. I'm going to talk about that later next time. Um, and uh, is it a list? Of course it is true. In other words, your data frame is also a list. Data frame is like, you know, co a collection of few, you know, co it's a collection of both numeric vectors and string vectors. That's, a, that's what data frame is. I used to think sometimes in the past that, oh my goodness, how do we think about data frames? It's just a, co each column can be a list. So it is a list of lists, so it's a list. So empty cards with the data sets, common data sets used in R, we are going to use that later as an example. And here's the example of how we use it to create a model and I will revisit these things. But is it list? The model itself is list, for example, because I said that 
this is where the object oriented programming is combining all kinds of different types of data set data properties and data elements so list is our most fundamental thing that we will use and list can contain the arrays dimensions and so on i want to stop here any questions a couple of minutes please you know um, there's a lot of good stuff learning uh, i hope you see this you know um, the value in these things and uh, i will stop here for uh, for your questions go ahead quick please you can type your questions also you should have one or two questions because it's like quiz for the time you spend right so one or one or two questions at least we should have it i, I will be very surprised if you don't any questions and you might see that you no know, it's going a little faster but i'm trying to give you you know 60000 30000 10000 10 feet above than the ground level most of the time but i will come to the ground level also show you some calculations and so on okay uh, any questions all right um, i'm fascinated Go, if, you have, if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat area also. Yes, please. If you have any questions, please do. In the chat area, while, um, you know, Kaushali will you know, wind up the session. Go ahead, Kaushali. I'm kind of, I hope I have I'm kind of disappointed. Yes, I hope they don't have any doubts at all, sir. It is very clear. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Oh, okay. There's one question. I'm very new to this. Yeah, there is a question. There. One question is there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, go, go ahead. So one question I'll give back. How do I start learning R? Coming and you know participating in this, for example, can help you. Um, the other one is you no. Know, the internet is a ton of resources out there, but the problem there is it will not connect with you easily. That's why we believe in speaking to you in our in our, in our uh, diploma program also we believe in real-time interaction with you people so we teach we spend time with you in lab so we really we really spend something like you know 30 hours for every subject there are six subjects we teach to give you a diploma you know if you uh, that you can get it usually in six months time okay so you have to spend time invest your time don't expect free education to be easy for you uh, there are some exceptional people, they may just learn by listening here and there, they spend their time, but it's a long way, it's a wasted way. Spend your time, commit your time, commit your resources and time and resources, learn formally, get certified by a professional group like us, Institute of Analytics USA, you know, which is a global organization, and move on with your profession because unless you are certified by a well, uh, collection of you know, good collection of you know, uh, staff people and the organization the, the industry will not also respect you so unless you are super good that's fine so my suggestion is be by back or be back i you know myself i'm sorry yeah, yeah, i mispronounced your name but the point is uh, you can join a program it could be a you know our institute or even course if you want you can do that there is a difference between course and as course it doesn't do real time and we do it real time uh, interact with you like this at a very specific time in a week. So, try to do this in this way, the way I, I mentioned it. We can attend to your questions in the future also. So, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. I'll see you next week. We'll do uh, data structures part two and trans uh, transformations. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay. We'll conclude, uh, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. I thank one and all on behalf of Institute of Analytics USA for your active participation and interaction to make the sessions as lively as possible. We look forward to meet you on next week, on Wednesday, at the same time. Once again, thank you. This is Kaushali signing up for the day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Kaushali. Bye, Vasu. Bye, Vinky. Bye. Bye.